Today we're gonna to be talking about blanching. Blanching really comes into play for me when you have an abundance of peak season vegetables. You don't know even what to do with them, but if you wait too long, they're gonna lose their color, they're gonna lose their flavor, so you need to do something. Blanching freezes a vegetable at its peak, and that's why it's important. So, keys to success are don't overcrowd your pot. You want a big pot of rapidly boiling water because rapidly boiling water will cook your vegetables quickly. The slower it takes, the drabbier, flabbier, gray your vegetables become. You want your vegetables to be crisp, snappy, green, just barely cooked, and then you're gonna plunge them into an ice bath and that's gonna freeze them in their perfect state. Early in my cooking days, I was working as a line cook and I was like a young, nervous cook and I'm trying to perfectly blanch the fava beans and the chef screams at me from across the kitchen. He's like, page 58, Thomas Keller, big pot blanching. And I had no idea what he was talking about. Uh, but then, you know, like a good young cook, I got the book and I read about big pot blanching. And my chef didn't yell at me quite as much. Another good use of the blanching technique is with hearty greens. Hearty, bitter, leafy greens, or something like broccoli rabe. If you blanch your broccoli rabe first, and then shock it in an ice bath, it's gonna maintain that bright green color, and you can wring it out, and then throw it in the saute pan with some garlic and chili, whatever, and it's gonna taste great, it's gonna look great. Another advantage of blanching, if you have an overabundance of vegetables, you can blanch those vegetables, shock them in ice water, and then freeze them. You're gonna have in your freezer some peak season veggies that then you can use a few months down the line. I wouldn't use blanching as a technique for vegetables that have too much moisture in them or very soft. So I think about like zucchini is very moist inside. It's not an ideal candidate for blanching. Eggplant wouldn't make any sense because it would get really mushy. The blanching water should taste salty like the ocean. You're not just cooking your vegetables for tenderness and for color, you're imparting some flavor too. The salt is gonna bring out the natural flavor of the vegetables. You want that water to be aggressively salty. The broccoli comes in this pot. Immediately the broccoli drops the temperature of that boiling water. The idea is the pot is big enough and we didn't add that much broccoli that it should come back up to a rapid boil quickly and then we're gonna be able to scoop it out and throw it in the ice bath. The longer this sits here without it rapidly boiling, the more the color could fade to dull and the vegetable could overcook slightly. How do you know when your vegetable is done? You should taste it. It's really the only way. Take one out, throw it in the ice bath, and eat it. You're looking for no longer raw, but not overcooked, as simple as that. Each vegetable should take one to two minutes. Obviously certain vegetables take longer, certain vegetables are quicker, but on average it'd be one to two minutes. So this is the broccoli after it's been cooked and shocked in the ice bath. I think it has a nice vibrant green color and the texture is not too soft, but it's no longer raw. It's sort of perfect right where you want it to be. One of the reasons I like blanching is you've done the work, now you could take this broccoli, put it in your fridge, you could serve it a day later, two days later. It's a way to do some prep in advance, and that way when you're actually serving the food, you can be more relaxed about it. You don't want these to get too soggy in the ice water. If you leave them there for an hour, obviously, I think it's gonna affect the flavor and the texture a little bit. Shock them till they're cold, take them right out, dry them off. There's no problem reusing the same water for different vegetables, unless one of your vegetables has a very particular flavor, for most vegetables, you're fine using it again and again. The only thing to look out for is the longer your water is boiling, obviously it's gonna evaporate, you're gonna have less water in the pot. You can take more water, add it to the pot, so you have a full pot of boiling water again. The asparagus was quick. I'd say that was like 45 seconds, maybe. I had a, a good number of green beans, this is about a pound. I did half now and I'm gonna do the next half afterwards. I don't wanna to add too much to the pot because that would drop the temperature a lot in this pot. 
and it would take longer for the water to start boiling again. That was like 30 seconds. You really don't want to overcook the vegetables. It's just taking them from raw to barely cooked. As we mentioned earlier, blanching is not just for crispy vegetables. It can also be for hearty, bitter, leafy greens. So broccoli rabe is the perfect example. We're gonna throw it in the rapidly boiling salted water. We're gonna shock it in the ice bath. And now, if you don't squeeze all the liquid out and then you try and saute it, you're gonna end up steaming it. It's gonna get mushy, it's gonna turn gray. By squeezing the liquid out allows it to release some of its bitterness, become a little bit more tender, and then when we saute it, it's gonna absorb all the flavors of the skillet, garlic, oil, chili, lemon. It's gonna be really nice. In order to enjoy those blanched vegetables we just made, we're gonna take some inspiration from southern France now. I got my rosé here, I got my mortar and pestle. We're gonna make a nice aioli, really simple. The traditional aioli starts with garlic and a pinch of salt. The salt acts as an abrasive in the mortar with the garlic, so when you smash it with the pestle, the salt and the garlic rub together in there, create almost like a paste, and that's the base of the aioli. Then we're gonna add our egg yolk and olive oil a little bit at a time, and it's gonna emulsify into like a mayonnaise, basically. You can break your yolk and mix it in with that base of garlic paste. If you add too much oil at once, your aioli is gonna break, it's gonna separate out a few drops at a time, and that's gonna create that emulsification of the oil suspended in the yolk to create the aioli. If you have a high quality olive oil that's sort of grassy, peppery, a little bit spicy, that's the perfect application here. If it gets too thick too fast, you can always add about a tablespoon of water to thin it out a little bit, and then keep adding the oil, give you more volume in your sauce. It's nice. Like I said before, it's really a nice vehicle to let your olive oil shine. If you have high quality olive oil, this is the time to use it. If you don't have great olive oil, you can actually use half olive oil and half neutral oil like grapeseed or canola. And then you can tweak it with a little bit of lemon, pepper. You don't have to do like the totally traditional classic thing of just garlic, salt, egg yolk, and olive oil. You know, spice it up if you want to. Brian, welcome to the Test Kitchen. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm excited to have you here. Now, before we really dig into it, do you have any preconceived notions about blanched vegetables? When I think of blanched vegetables, I think super plain, super basic. Um, if my grandmother was making them, I would think they're super flavorless. Right. But I'm sure that you have something completely I, different. It's, it's fair to say those things. I think a lot of people, when they think of blanched vegetables, they might think of something a little bit flabby or drab, that sort sure. of thing. What we were going for here was more of like a, a little bit of crispiness still, right. not blanched till they were totally soft, right. and a little bit of flavor infused with that boiling water, so some salt flavor in with it. Cool. The three vegetables that we featured blanching were the broccoli, the string beans, and the asparagus. That's mm -hmm. what I really want you to taste and think about texture and flavor. Okay. Everything else is just sort of for decoration. <laughs> we're going for like a southern France, kind of Provence, Le Grand Aioli kind of vibe with the rosé wine and the whole thing. So we can really, let's like settle in here and just, you know, enjoy ourselves. I was really hoping there was going to be rosé involved. Yeah. Also. The people at home don't need to know that it's like 10.30 <laughs> in the morning. Maybe they should, I don't yeah. know. 1108, hey. You know what they say, after 11, it's all good. <laughs> they don't hey. say that. <laughs> Cheers. What should I start with? Whatever you Do want. the same. Yeah. Mmm. It's really good. A little bit of crispness still. Yeah. It's not totally mushy. Yeah. I like the green color. Not tough, really simple to eat. Um, there's a slight texture and chewiness, but it, you know, it doesn't completely collapse or like turn to mush in your mouth. Perfect consistency, um, you know, great for uh, being flavorful, but also still um, allowing the aioli to shine, which it totally does. Um, I'm a fan. Well, these are not your grandmother's vegetables. Right. There's still something <laughs> to enjoy there. Between raw and overcooked, there's just a thin window. 
And what I One like that I never <laughs> achieve. <laughs> well, what I like about blanching is if you have your ice bath right there, right at the moment when they're perfect, you throw them in the ice bath and that freezes them exactly where you want yeah. them to be. So with a little bit of practice, you have some control over what you're doing. Yeah, good point. So off camera, we're gonna devour this thing. But for now, there's one other there's one other application to blanching that I want to talk with you about. Okay. So if you don't mind, I'll just push this aside. All right. Well, don't push it too far. <laughs> Besides that, like blanching and chalking that we were talking about, mm -hmm. blanching is also good for sort of par cooking, hearty or bitter leafy greens, brothy rob things like that. I waited to add the lemon juice because the acidity of the lemon can dull the color, and oh. we're trying to like prove a point of like when you blanch, it's nice and bright and green. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, that's really good. Mm -hmm. I like that all the um, extra ingredients that you added um, balances out the bitterness of broccoli rub really mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's really good. I'm a fan of that. It's gonna be my lunch today. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad I had someone to share this bounty with on Thank camera. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, and you know, take it and share with your friends. Just like this entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go share this with the rest of the office. If you like videos like this, click like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.